In our society today, we're surrounded by a lot of facts, but very little truth. This can have an impact on your life because the opposite of truth is not only error, but sin. So how can you recognize truth? And how does truth bring freedom and liberty to your life? We're going to talk about that next as Arkansas Live starts right now. First of all, I'd like to pray for you today. I'd also like to pray for all those in authority. Uh, so if you can just stop and join me right now. Father, I pray for our president. I pray for our vice president. I pray for our governor. I pray for all of our constitutional officers, those in authority, pastors, leaders. I pray that you'd give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Protect them. I pray the blood of Jesus over them to cover them. No weapon formed against them will prosper. No evil befall them. No plague come near them. And Father, I pray for our viewers today that you by the Holy Spirit would meet them at their point of need, that you would heal, deliver, save, perfect, correct. We pray for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to welcome you to this week's topic the knowledge of the truth. And if we complete all this information, uh, then I might get back into the vital side of redemption and the legal side of redemption. This is, a, this is a revelation that I think will help a lot of people. The legal side of redemption, the vital side of redemption. So those two topics we're going to cover this week if we have time. Let's go first of all to John chapter 8. <clears throat> and if I can, let me start at the beginning of the chapter, and I think it'll help if we, if we come up to our text, which is John 8, 31. But let me start at verse 1. <clears throat> this is Jesus on the Mount of Olives, and in the early morning he came to the temple, and all the people came to him, he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Now, you know the story. I'm not going to read every letter, every verse. The woman taken in, in adultery, and uh, they wanted Jesus' opinion. What does the law say, etc.? Of course, the law uh, required her to be stoned. Now, to keep in mind our topic, which is the knowledge of the truth. Um, and so go on down to where Jesus said, He that is without sin uh, cast the first stone. Well, everybody walked off, dropped their rocks because there was nobody without sin. And he told the woman, he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then he spoke unto them and said, <clears throat> now listen very carefully. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. <clears throat> The Pharisees therefore said unto him, You bear record of yourself, and your record is not true. Then Jesus answered them and said, Though I bear record of myself, my record is true, for I know from whence I came and where I go, but you cannot tell where I came from and where I go. You judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Notice he didn't judge the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. He just simply told her not to sin anymore. Adultery is sin. He said, I don't condemn you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't sin anymore. Then Jesus goes on and says, I am not alone, but I am the father that sent me. And it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. Then the disciples said to Jesus, Where is your Father? Jesus said, You neither know me nor my Father. <laughs> if you'd known me, you would have known my Father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury. Now, we see him at the Temple Mount. We see him, the woman caught in the act of adultery. Now we see him at the treasury. And as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, then said Jesus unto them again, 
I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that you will die in your sins, for you believe not that I am he. You shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who are you? <laughs> and Jesus said, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say to you and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Well, the next verse says, They understood not that he spake uh, to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak those things. And He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please Him. As He spake these words, many believed on Him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And here it is. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, these guys didn't understand that. And they were uh, Abraham's seed. And they took issue with what he said. And they said, well, we're Abraham's seed. We're in bondage to no man. What do you mean the truth will make us free? We're free men. They did not understand what he was talking about. Let me make another observation for you. Over in, um, let's see, verse 20. Let's see, let, yeah, verse 21. He said, I go my way, you seek me and shall die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. Then they said, where you go, we can come. He said, where, you, where I go, you cannot come. Now go over to John 14. Now I just want to make this distinction because we're going to cover this um, a, a little bit later. John chapter 14, and let's look at verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, and I will prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, here's only six chapters apart where he said, where I go, you cannot go. And then he says, where I go, you will know, and the way you will know. Well, now, Jesus spoke of himself as the way, the truth, and the life. Remember, we're talking about the knowledge of the truth. The disciples did not know the truth. They knew Jesus, but they did not know who he was. They did not know he was Messiah. They did not know the truth of who he was. Now, go back to John 8. And let's look at verse 32 again. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, I want to make a distinction because you've probably heard others or even me say the truth will set you free or the truth will make you free. If a dog is tied up in the backyard with a chain around his neck, tied to a chain or a rope, and you take that collar off, you set that dog free. He's free to go anywhere in the yard that he wants to go. You've only set him free from the leash and the chain. You have not made him free to go out into the neighborhood to go wherever he wants to go. Uh, let's take the... Uh, 
the touchy subject of slavery today in the South. We see a lot, you know, stuff that is both contentious and so forth. Uh, the slaves were set free by the Emancipation Proclamation under the president's uh, ministry of Abraham Lincoln, 1865, after the Civil War. They were set free. They no longer had to work on the plantation. They were set free. They could go anywhere they wanted to go as physically but they weren't made free. They were not made free in the eyes of society. They were not made free to vote. They were not free people. They were set free, but they were not made free. Jesus is telling his disciples here, the knowledge of the truth makes you free not just sets you free, makes you free from error, sin. It makes you free from offense. It makes you free from sickness, disease, poverty. Uh, the knowledge of the truth makes you free. If you don't have the knowledge of the truth, you're not free. Millions and millions of Christians today in churches all over the world have no knowledge of the truth. So therefore, they are not made free. They're still in bondage. Oh, they're set free as far as the society, the freedom to go anywhere they want, the freedom to freedom of speech, the freedom of this, whatever. It's, it's not that they're not set free. It's that they've not been made free from bondage, from error, from sin, because they don't know the truth. Uh, let me show you an example. I'm going to go back and forth and, and pick out little pockets here, things that I know um, have kept people in bondage. Let me see if I can find this. It's not in my notes. Um, here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. These are little areas of the knowledge of the truth that will make you free. Um, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Underline common to man, because that, that, that explains uh, what he's saying here. There's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above the temptation above that that you're able but with the temptation will make a way to escape it that you may be able to bear it or to deal with it now for years I've heard this quoted when I first became a Christian I heard people quote this and I'll give you an example of my precious little grandmother my father's mother I've heard people say this God won't put any more on you than you can bear now, that is not the truth. That is not a truth. That is not the truth. But so many Christians are bound by religion. They think that's true, but that's not true. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say God will not put any more on you than you can bear. That has been derived from this verse as a religious catch-all, a religious saying. But it's not true. It's not the truth. It's not a truth. And I, I heard my little grandmother one time, she had to put my grandfather in a nursing home because he was just old. He was almost 90 years old at the time. And she couldn't take care of him. So she put him in a, a nursing home right down the street from where she lived, where they lived. And uh, they were married almost 70 years. I mean, they loved each other. My grandmother, she just couldn't stand up being away from him. So every day she'd go sit with him in the nursing home and she'd come home at night, go back the next day. And I would meet her over there and I would visit with him and talk with him because I'd spent years with my grandparents, both sets. Thank the Lord for that. 
And one day we were walking down the hall and my grandfather, bless his heart, he sometimes couldn't remember uh, certain things and <laughs> it, it, it hurt my grandmother, grieved her. So we were walking down the hall one day and she just shook her head and she said, grandson, please pray for me. She said, I know the Bible says God won't put any more on us than we can bear, but this is almost more than I can bear. Oh man, I, did, I, I debated whether to say anything because in our family, you didn't correct your elders. And, but I, I felt led to say to her what the scripture says because I knew what she was thinking. She was thinking 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God won't put any more on you than you can bear. Now you may think this is the truth, but it's not. Not that saying. That saying is not a truth. That's a religious expression that was extracted from the truth. But it holds people in bondage. But once you know the truth, the knowledge of the truth makes you free. Free from error. Free from sin. So I quoted the verse to her. I said, Grandmother, the Bible says that God will not allow you to be tempted above the uh, that you're able to deal with, but will make the way for you to escape it. And when I quoted that to her, he will not allow you to be tempted above your able, but when the temptation comes, he will make a way for you to escape it that you may deal with it or overcome it. And she just looked at me like I had slapped her in the face. And right then, the Spirit of God spoke to my spirit and said, See, she does not recognize the truth because she has believed a lie for 75 or 80 years. She lived on to 93. And these were godly people. They loved Jesus. They went to church every, day, every Sunday. Uh, they tithed. Uh, they lived through the Great Depression, raised a family of four. I mean, these were honest, hardworking, godly, God-fearing folks. But she had believed the wrong thing all her life so that when I spoke the truth to her, she had no knowledge of that. Well, as she began to continue to watch me and listen to me as I began in the ministry, <laughs> it, she began to send me offerings. My grandmother, she began to send, an, send me offerings. And she asked me to do both her and my grandfather's funerals. And I did. And she was, she was, I believe, informed, educated by my teaching and preaching. And she got knowledge of the truth. I'll tell you another, another little, she knew I was spirit filled. She knew, now she was raised Baptist and she was a good Baptist. But when I got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and, and talked to them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, she knew there was something different about me. She knew there was something different in my life. She saw the transition in my life. She saw the change in my life. And one day I was over at their house and she showed me a letter that her pastor had written to the congregation and said, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues or you are associated with or affiliated with anybody that does speak in tongues, you need to know this is of the devil and you need to disassociate yourself from those people and that experience. <laughs> now, one thing about my grandmother I never heard her ever say anything negative or critical or judgmental about anybody. If she did, I never heard it. And I was over at their house a lot. And she never said anything about anybody critical. She didn't say anything about that letter from her pastor. But she just wanted me to see that. And she looked at me like, what do you think of this? 
And she didn't say anything, yay or nay. She, she knew I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I could tell that really hurt her, that really grieved her, that her pastor would say that about the Holy Spirit. Now, her pastor um, retired after that and died after that, short-lived. I think he came so close to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You know, when you ascribe the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil, that's blasphemy. He came so close. I believe God uh, removed him from the pulpit, from the pastorate, um, before he could um, damage himself. But my grandmother was very interesting. I noticed that she, she did not criticize her pastor, but she was grieved because she knew that what I had experienced was real. She saw the change in my life. She knew me from the time I was born till the time I went into the ministry. She knew that I was a different young man. And she knew only Jesus could have done that. She knew only God could have done what happened to me. So when the knowledge of the truth came, she embraced it. She was made free from error when she got the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is important. It is important the church that you attend. It can even mean death or life the church that you attend. Uh, go back to John 8 and let's look at verse 32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Wouldn't you agree that that's important? Let's go over to 3 John. Let's look at 3 John and verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, even as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Now, this is why truth is important. The Bible says that God has no greater joy. Now, that's quite a statement in itself. No greater joy than his children when they walk in truth. The knowledge of the truth makes you free. Uh, let me explain that phrase again. The knowledge of the truth makes you free. Free or regardless of your circumstances regardless of your restrictions. Let me go back to the issue of slavery. The, the African-American man was made free when the Emancipation Proclamation was passed and Abraham Lincoln set the slaves free in 1865. He was made free, but he, I mean, he was set free, but he wasn't made free unless he understood the truth of that Emancipation Proclamation and the Declaration of Freedom, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what people think about you, regardless of what people say to you, you're free. You've been made free. You're not a servant. You're not a slave. You're not in bondage anymore. Uh, let me give you another example. There was a lady came to me um, one day after church, one Sunday after church, and she said, Pastor, uh, would you pray for me? She said, uh, and she was very nice about it. it was, I could tell there was no hate. There was no uh, anything like that. It was just a hurt. And it could turn into hate if she'd allowed it, but she didn't allow it. She said, I have been um, discriminated against at my job. She said, I have been passed over. I don't remember exactly how she had been discriminated against, but because of her race and her color. And she told me a little bit about it. I said, okay, let's pray. I said, are you going to take offense? Are you going to take the uh, offense uh, of this? She said, no, I'm not. I'm going to walk in forgiveness. Now, 
she's a free person. But she's got a circumstance. She's got a, she's got a restraint here that should not be there. So we prayed. And I prayed, Lord, I ask you to give her a better job working for a better company, making more money. Now, she had told me in her story that the people around her had been very critical and judgmental and, uh, you know, and, uh, discriminating against her and so forth. And you, nobody wants to work in an environment like that. So I pray that the Lord would give her a better job with people that loved her and making more money. And she walked away from there. She received that prayer. She wasn't going to sue anybody. She, she had a right to. She wasn't going to sue anybody. She, she, and she came to me a few weeks or months later. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. And she said, Pastor, I just want to let you know. I have a better job working with nicer people and I'm making more money. <laughs> That's being made free. Yes, people are offensive. Yes, people make wrong decisions. Yes, people make judgments they shouldn't make. But you can walk in a freedom and a liberty regardless of circumstances. That's what it means to be made free. I am free from the circumstances. They can't hurt me. I am free from the names they may call me. I am free from any of that uh, consternation. I'm not, I'm not guilty. I'm, I'm made free because I have the knowledge of the truth. So uh, the knowledge of the truth makes you free regardless of your circumstances, regardless of the restrictions, the restraints. And, you know, because of the liberty that you have in Christ Jesus, you're made free. Now, tomorrow we're going to continue with this and we'll go over to James chapter 1 and let you see the difference between freedom and liberty. It's very interesting and very important that you have the knowledge of the truth. And I'll give you these examples uh, as I've done today as we go along. So join me tomorrow uh, on Arkansas Live. And remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and wherever you're watching through live stream in other states, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.